Conference to this week in Big Sky Basketball as we take you around the conference for all the latest in Big Sky news. Now, here's your host, Scott Gerard. Welcome on in. It's another edition of This Weekend Big Sky Basketball. I'm Scott Gerard. Last weekend was a bit of a decision weekend in the Big Sky on the men's side of the draw. No more undefeated teams in the league. Both Montana and Weber State picked up losses. Then on the women's side, Eastern Washington down the league's other undefeated team in Montana State and then had a buzzer beater give them a win over Montana. We're going to break it all down. Great guest lineup today. Southern Utah coach Nick Robinson will join us here in a moment. In our second segment, we'll catch up with Eastern Washington coach uh, Wendy Schuler. And then uh, Kevin E. Martin will join us from College Insiders. We'll start with the men's side. Idaho earning a big road win at Montana, knocking out the previously undefeated Grizzlies 63-58 before eventually falling to Montana State on Saturday. Then on Saturday, Idaho State's Ethan Telfair hits a buzzer beater to give the Bengals a win over Weber State 69-68 in Pocatello. So nobody is undefeated on the men's side. Other games last weekend included North Dakota's 2-0 road sweep with a 101-59 win over Northern Arizona, and then following that up with an 88-72 victory over Southern Utah. Northern Colorado also earned the sweep of the same road trip, 90-80 win over Southern Utah, and then an 84-79 win over Northern Arizona. Montana State gets a home sweep with a win over Idaho, and then an 85-71 win over Eastern Washington. Finally, Portland State with an 81-63 victory over Sacramento State. This week's Men's Player of the Week in the Big Sky Conference, Idaho State Guard Ethan Telfair, as we mentioned, after leading the Bengals to that 69-68 win over conference leader Weber State on Saturday. The junior from Coney Island scored a game-high 30 points at the game winner at the buzzer to lead Idaho State to the victory. That win up to Idaho State's record to 8-10 and 3-3 and and in Big Sky play. With that, let's go out to the phone. Welcome in Southern Utah head coach Nick Robinson. Coach, welcome to the program. How are you? I'm doing great. I appreciate uh, being home this morning. How are you doing? I'm doing well. It's always good to catch up with you. First off, I know you're coming off a couple losses, but you did get some really good individual performances like Trey Kennedy in both games. Tell us a little bit about those games last week. Yeah, last week uh, I thought we were uh, competitive, uh, you know, for half in each of those games. Uh, but both Northern Colorado and North Dakota uh, took advantage of uh, some of our mistakes and played, uh, you know, a complete game, uh, which ultimately led to the losses. But uh, you're right, we've had uh, good individual performances um, over the past uh, couple of weeks. Uh, you know, I'm pleased uh, with the improvement of our team. Uh, we just got to get better to Trey Kennedy, second on the team in scoring with 12.8 points per game. He's been your leading scorer uh, quite a bit recently. What does he bring individually to the squad and, and, and kind of his talent skill set and what, what he does for your team night in and night out? You know, I think he does a nice job of, um, uh, you know, running the team uh, when he's at the point guard spot. Uh, you know, he allows the game to come to him. Um, you know, and he's uh, obviously gotten uh, to be a better defender as time has moved forward. Uh, but we've been really pleased uh, with his playmaking ability uh, and his willingness, uh, you know, to compete night in and night out. Uh, and he's just been a lot more consistent uh, than he ever has been. Trayvon Langston, also a strong player for you this season. Where do you think he ranks as far as, far as some of his other fellow uh, players in the uh, Big Sky Conference? You know, I think Trey and Trayvon uh, rank up there in terms of backcourts uh, in this league. Uh, you know, I think they've done a nice job, um, you know, overall uh, throughout Big Sky Conference play. Um, you know, Trayvon has done a much better job this year uh, being able to get to the free throw line and staying aggressive. You know, both of them are averaging, you know, uh, double the amount of points that they were averaging last year. Uh, so it's nice to see, uh, you know, their improvement. Uh, um, you know, but, you know, unfortunately, we've got to get off uh, this uh, losing streak that we're on and uh, hopefully come out and compete at a high level against uh, one of the hottest teams in our league. Yeah, I know you talk about trying to snap that losing streak. Let's talk about that. What are your points of emphasis going forward in the second half of the season? What are, what are you trying to get your team to work on to try to put a few more W's in that category? 
you know, for her to really try to defend her better as a team, um, you know, and coming off of our uh, North Dakota outing, uh, we want to get back uh, to playing at a hard tempo, uh, which allows us to take care of the ball and get good shots. Um, you know, Idaho State, uh, you know, has uh, won two games, um, uh, you know, over the past uh, couple of weeks, and so it's going to be an extremely tough challenge on Thursday, uh, you know, against them, uh, and I think they're one of the better defensive teams in our league, so, um, you know, we're going to have to come out and, and uh, compete, uh, you know, we want to hit open shots uh, versus uh, Coach Evans' zone, um, but it's going to be a tough weekend for us. Yeah, no doubt about it. When you see Idaho State and their recent success, and Weber State always good in the league, uh, that, that's a that's that's a monstrous, difficult road trip to make. It really is, you know, but it's been interesting over the first uh, few weeks of league play, uh, you know, how competitive uh, this league is, and it's just going to get more competitive, you know, as we're all uh, on this road to Reno, and, uh, you know, it, it's uh, been relatively unpredictable, uh, but obviously, you know, the plus teams in our league uh, have been able to win on the road and have played well uh, consistently throughout. Well, Coach, we certainly appreciate it. Thanks for carving out a few moments for us. Good luck the rest of the way. We look forward to catching up with you again soon. All right, thank you, and have a great day. The pleasure's all ours. And as Coach mentioned, Road to Reno, that is the website. Go to RoadToReno.com. Get your tickets, your hotel accommodations, the Big Sky Conference Tournament in Reno, March 7th. Uh, Big Sky, it all kicks off again March 7th. This is the 2016 Big Sky Basketball Championships taking place in Reno. Go to RoadToReno.com. We'll take a quick break, come back. Talk about what happened this past weekend on the women's side of the Big Sky Conference. We'll also chat with Eastern Washington coach Wendy Schuler when we return on this week in Big Sky Basketball. A new era has come to Big Sky Conference basketball. 24 teams will invade the Reno Event Center on March 7th. Make plans to join us in Reno, where you'll be the witness to all the basketball madness you can handle. Tickets are on sale now. Visit www.roadtoreno.com to get all the details on how you can join your team on the road to Reno. We play to win, but it's bigger than winning. It's about authenticity, being true to yourself, genuine dreams and a country big enough to fit them. Values and hard work, giving your best and giving back. Working together, building a tradition bigger than any one of us and showing the world every day who we are and how we play. We're Big Sky. We are the heart of the American West. Welcome back. Segment number two here on this weekend, Big Sky Basketball. I'm Scott Gerard. Hey, the 2016 Big Sky Basketball Championships taking place in Reno. The official website, RoadToReno.com. Get your tickets, your hotel accommodations. March 7th, Big Sky Basketball kicks off. Don't miss a minute of it. Go to RoadToReno.com. Uh, Wendy Schuler, the head coach of the Eastern Washington women's team, will join us here in a moment. But first, let's take a look at what happened last weekend in Big Sky women's hoops. Starting with the Eagles, Eastern Washington, a big 2-0 sweep of Montana State and Montana Eagles with an 81-69 victory over Montana State on Thursday. And then Delaney Hodgins with a buzzer beater knock off Lady Grizz on Saturday. Then on Montana, as we mentioned, going 0-2 on that Eastern Idaho swing, falling 78-61 at Idaho and then 67-65 to Eastern Washington. North Dakota goes 2-0 with wins over Northern Arizona and Southern Utah. Northern Colorado also 2-0 with wins over NAU and Southern Utah. Sacramento State breaks the NCAA record for the most threes made in a game they made 25 in a 126-78 victory over Portland State. Idaho State got the win over Weber State. Final score there, 58-57. And finally, Montana State with a 62-59 victory over Idaho on Saturday to split their two-game road trip. All right, time to reveal our Big Sky Women's Player of the Week, and it's a two-part award this weekend. First off, Eastern Washington's Haley Hodgins, who averaged 28.5 points a game while scoring 34 points in the victory over Montana State. Then Sacramento State's Brianna Burgos, who scored 32 points and hit six threes as the Hornets broke that NCAA record. All right, let's go out to the phone lines. Welcome in Eastern Washington head coach Wendy Schuler. Coach, congratulations on that road sweep. How are you? Or home sweep, excuse me. How are you? 
Hi, I'm great. Thank you. I know coaches uh, treat every league game as the same, but with undefeated Montana State and the Lady Grizz coming to town, I know uh, probably there may have been something a little different in the air that week. Well, you know, I mean, I think there were a couple of things. The fact that we were at home, um, you know, after a long road trip the week before, uh, you know, you you always emphasize to your team just the importance of trying to take care of business at home. And, you know, anytime you play the Montanas, it's, it's a big deal here. Um, you know, there's just kind of a – I think it starts in football and, and has just trickled down to basketball, the, the rivalry that with, the, with the Montana schools. And then I think the last piece is that we only play those guys once during the regular season. And so, you know, for tiebreaker reasons and all those different types of things, um, those were important games as well. Haley Hodgins, your uh, Big Sky Player of the Week. Uh, we talk about her points per game and the amount of contributions she makes on the court. But as a leader of this team, what does she contribute off the court for the squad? You know, Haley just does, does her job. She, uh, you know, she, her demeanor is, is so good. She never gets too worked up or um, too upset about anything. She never gets too high, too low. She's just a, a nice, calming influence. She... Uh, has had a lot of fun, I think, this year with, with the youngsters on our team. Um, I think they've kind of kept her young a little bit and um, made it a, made a really fun senior year for her. With that 34 points against Montana State, uh, talk about that individual performance because that's, that's, that's an incredible number there. Yeah, and, you know, the number doesn't even uh, reflect what kind of performance it was because Montana State is, you know, they're, they're one of the best teams in our league and, and they uh, have played really good basketball all year. And, and uh, so, so to step up, um, you know, against a team like that and, and uh, perform the way she did, she hit some shots that were, you know, just out of this world and uh, big shots when we needed them. Um, you know, I just I, I think that sometimes you can't quantify a performance by, by a number because um, it was a special, special night for her. It's such a overall competitive league. How would you assess the conference race right now with what you've seen? You know, I, <laughs> honestly, I think it's same as usual. <laughs> same old, same old. But just because every year this league is uh, is one where on any given night anybody can beat anyone, and it's kind of just who can who's still standing at the end. Um, you know, I, I expected that coming in and looking at non-conference success of, of all the different teams. I think uh, it's uh, it's living up to the billing of, of being a you know another great conference race. One of the things that really jumps out when I watch your team, you've got a lot of really good quality depth. Uh, how has that really worked with your lineups this year, and, and has that been one of the keys to your success this season? Well, I think, uh, you know, we've got really young depth, and uh, the thing that's been really nice for us is the fact that those youngsters have been able to step up and, um, and assume roles that a lot of times you're not normally asked to assume at that age, and They've uh, embraced it. They haven't, you know. Sometimes it's good. They don't know to be afraid of Montana or anybody like that. <laughs> they uh, they just come and play. And um, but they've given us, uh, you know, a level of athleticism, and they've bought into our system. And they're, uh, you know, there's great kids, and and uh, have been great additions for our team. Picking up that first round by in the conference tournament is going to be really key to a lot of these teams. Are you at a point in the season where you're kind of looking ahead towards that? Or are you still in? Take it one game at a uh, at a time mode. Uh, definitely one game at a time mode. We're not even halfway through the conference race, so um, there's there's a lot of basketball left to be played, and we have a lot of improvement that we've got to do on our behalf. Uh, you know, before March. So right now we're just working day to day to to get better. You got a uh, on the road this weekend, Portland State again, and then against Sacramento State. Who we know uh, they love to uh, really score the basketball. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you see out of these teams and what you need to do to be successful this weekend. Well, the, the first thing is that we've just got to do what we do. You know, we've got to be really solid on the defensive end and communicate and play extremely hard. And, and then offensively, um, hopefully that, that gets clicking, you know, just based on what we're doing on the defensive end of things. Um, you know, Portland's a team that's, uh, that's battling and they're playing really hard and they're fighting for everything. And, um, you know, I know that we've got a target on our back, and, and they're going to be coming after us. So we've got to be prepared for that game. Um, and then, uh, you know, Sac State is, is always a tough opponent, and it's always hard to play there. Um, and, uh, you know, there's some just different things you got to do to prepare for their press and, and for the way that they play. And, 
uh, we'll work on those things to see if we can get ready. Well, Coach, we appreciate it. Good luck the rest of the way. We look forward to catching up with you again soon. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. You got it. Eastern Washington head coach uh, Wendy Schuler here on this week in Big Sky Basketball. Final segment coming up next. We'll take a look at this weekend's conference games for both the men and the women's. We'll also chat with uh, college insiders Kevin e. Martin about mid-major women's basketball. It's all straight ahead on another edition of This Week in Big Sky Hoops. A new era has come to Big Sky Conference basketball. 24 teams will invade the Reno Event Center on March 7th. Make plans to join us in Reno, where you'll be the witness to all the basketball madness you can handle. Tickets are on sale now. Visit www.roadtoreno.com to get all the details on how you can join your team on the Road to Reno. segment of this edition of This Week in Big Sky Basketball. I'm Scott Gerard. Uh, looking forward to another conversation with Kevin e. Martin here in a moment from College Insiders. But right now, let's take a look at your schedules for both the men's and the women's side. Games coming up this weekend. First, let's start on the men's side. Weaver State and Idaho State hosting the Southern Utah Northern Arizona Travel Partners. Idaho and Eastern Washington host Sacramento State and Portland State. Then in rivalry action, Montana travels to Bozeman to square off against Montana State. Also, North Dakota will travel to play against Northern Colorado. Then on the women's side, Eastern Washington travels to Portland State and Sac State this weekend as they attempt to stay undefeated. Idaho also on that same road trip. Also, Southern Utah, Northern Arizona hosting the Weaver State, Idaho State travel partners this weekend. A couple good rivalry games this weekend on the women's side, of course, is a battle for the state of Montana. The Lady Grizz travel to Bozeman to take on Montana State. Also, Northern Colorado and North Dakota riding multiple game-winning streaks. They'll square off Saturday in Grand Forks. And, of course, you can watch every Big Sky game, every bucket, every buzzer beater for free in high definition on WatchBigSky.com. Games are available on any device with an Internet connection, whether cell phone, tablet, laptop, desktop. Just go to WatchBigSky.com. With that, let's welcome in a good friend of the program, College Insiders, Kevin e. Martin. Kevin, e., good to chat with you again. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing well. Let's start with uh, Eastern Washington getting a home sweep over previously undefeated Montana State and Montana. As a former player, how important are, are getting those home wins over strong teams in conference play? Well, you know, at this point of the season, every single game is critical, and um, mostly home games, you know, are must win. And if you want to stay atop your conference, you absolutely must protect home court. It's in front of your home fans your own environment, you're comfortable in that environment. So these are must-wins, especially, as you said, over the upper echelon of your conference. So it's critical to get these wins. And Eastern Washington really came out and showed that uh, that they, you know, can can play and hold on to that top spot. You know, frankly, I don't care what conference we're talking about. If you're undefeated past the midway point, you're obviously a force to be reckoned with. Eastern Washington, that's the case for them at this point in the season. What does that say to you about where their program's at right now? Just how impressive is that? As you said, it doesn't matter what conference you're playing in. To be undefeated, I mean, that's a feat right there. They are just solid from top to bottom. And the, the job that Wendy Shore has done there in her 15th season, she consistently, year in and year out, has her team competing at the top of the big sky, which is just so impressive. And then this year to be undefeated, I mean, it doesn't hurt to have a player as dynamic as Haley Hodgins. Um, she's just so much fun to watch, and she can put those numbers up, averaging over 20 points a game, which is the conference best. Um, but it's not even Hodgins. They have so many dynamic players through and through, and then their coaching staff, as you said, it's just so impressive, and it just says so speaks so high of where this this team is at in this conference. College Insiders Kevin e. Martin joining us here on this week in Big Sky Basketball. Now, you, you know, you're a former player. You know what it's how difficult a long season can be. And when you hit the halfway point of the conference schedule, I mean, the wear and tear on the body, I'm sure, has got to be uh, pretty dramatic at this point. How do you try to keep that that uh, same level of intensity and focus game in and game out when you, you know, your body, frankly, doesn't want to respond the way it did probably early in the season? Exactly. And, I mean, it's, it goes – on and off the court um, practice as well. Um, a lot of 
coaches will tailor to their team if they see the, the focus lacking. Um, my coach was very good at honing in, um, especially during this time of the season, as you said, to refocus and um, hone that energy. And my coach was great at you know, making sure, and it's different for every player, and you have to stylize your coaching to every player. But on the court, uh, refocus and practice, make it intense, um, put in some intense drills, you know, that are competitive and there's a, there's a winner and that type of stuff to make the, to carry over that intensity to the game. And, um, I mean, off the court, I would say it's simple, ice bath. They're, they are they're your players' friend, huh? best friend. They are a players' best They're miserable while you're in there, but you get out and you're, you feel like a brand-new person. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Hey, uh, we talked about Sacramento State a few weeks ago. Another NCAA record falls uh, to them. They made 25 threes in that victory over Portland State. Now, we see records broken from time to time, but did that one make your jaw drop a little bit? Oh, definitely. I mean, I'm sitting here thinking, I mean, that's incredible, just absolutely incredible. And I have a chance, um, I talked real quick, I talked to um, Doug Day, I don't know if that name rings a bell. He played at Radford University, and he actually held the record in three-pointers made in the late 80s, early 90s at 401. And we actually talked about this, and his jaw dropped. So you know that <laughs> that's something when uh, a, play, a former player who actually held the NCAA record in three-pointers made at one point um, – I mean, it's just astounding what Sacramento State is doing, especially behind the arc. So let's uh, talk about some national storylines you're following in uh, college basketball for College Insiders. What do you got brewing over there? To be honest, um, I'm really, really liking what's going on um, in the big sky, both on the men's and women's side. And, um, I mean, obviously Eastern Washington playing undefeated right now. Um, On the guys' side, Weber State looks great. Um, And... I mean, there's a, a number of really solid teams that I think this year can make some big noise in the tournament. Um, Little Rock is playing out of their mind right now. NIU, uh, Northern Illinois University is just playing great. I mean, it's just really the team. I think this year we're going to see more than one or two Cinderella stories. I think wow. that we're going to see a lot of mid-major teams making some splashes in, in every tournament. The NIT the CBI, the College Insider Tournament. I mean, it's going to be a fun, fun season. We'll make sure to get all our stuff at College Insiders. It's Kevin e. Martin. Kevin, e., thanks for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you. You got it. Kevin, e. Mar- or Kevin e. Martin joining us here on uh, This Week in Big Sky Basketball. Also, special thanks to Eastern Washington coach Wendy Schuler and Southern Utah coach Nick Robinson, who joined us in segment number one. As always, big thanks to Austin Horton and the executive producers of This Week in Big Sky Basketball, John Oglesby and Jason Ashcraft. I'm Scott Gerard. Thanks for listening. We'll be back with you next week for another edition of This Week in Big Sky Basketball.